For College, I'm Brian Parinal. And I'm Vincent Lee. Welcome to the November 29th edition of Seascope, Cypress College's online news source. Cypress College's electronic marquee is to be replaced by December 21st. Floresco Lighting and Signs failed to fulfill its contract obligations because the company built the marquee too small. The marquee, which measured 4 by 10 and 1 half feet, should have been 1 foot taller and 3 feet wider. Floresco has agreed to fix the defective marquee. The marquee will be built to meet the specifications of the contract and will also be reorientated to face the intersection of Valley View Street and Lake Shore Drive. If you're looking to give back to the Cypress community, the Cypress Senior Center is looking for volunteers. One of the volunteer opportunities, for example, is to deliver meals to homes. To sign up and for more information, call Joan Barden, Recreational Coordinator at 714-229-2005 or email her at jbarden at ci.cypress.ca.us. Tomorrow, November 30th, is the last day Cypress homes, condominiums, apartments, businesses, and business complexes can turn their application to the Cypress Recreation Commission for their holiday decorating contest. Applications and rules can be found on the city's website, located at the bottom of the screen. Contestants need to print, fill out, sign, and then submit their application at 5700 Orange Avenue, Cypress, California, 90630. The submission must include the $5 entry fee for the holiday decorating contest. Another on-campus exhibition was the Laptop Theater, coordinated by Ed Giardina, this past Wednesday, November 28th, from 6 to 9 p.m., outside the Fine Arts Building on the second floor patio. Student videos from laptop computers were projected onto the walls of the Fine Arts and Theater Building surrounding the patio. Apart from the event coordinators, there are a few people there just coming in and out. The vibe of the place was pretty laid back, resembling that of an outdoor drive-in cinema. Dr. Milana Karanga, the founder of Kwanzaa, will be speaking at the Cypress College Theater Lobby on Monday, December 10th from 3 to 5 p.m. Karanga will speak about Kwanzaa, the African-American holiday that was first celebrated on December 26, 1966. That's going to wrap it up for the Cypress Campus News. Now here's Kevin Newberger with a look at Cypress College Sports. Kevin? Okay, thanks a lot, Brian. All right, we don't have much to go over in sports, so I'll make it kind of quick. We're going to start off with men's basketball. For their sixth game of the season, Cypress hit the road to face El Camino last Wednesday. With an early record of 2-3 and three for the season, the Chargers were looking to even it up with a win. Things weren't going well at the end of the first half, however, with Cypress down 25 points. Sophomore Eric Butler scored a game-high 17 points before fouling out. But the team as a whole could not reverse the first half deficit and ended the game 97-72. That put the men standing at 2-4 for the season thus far. They face Rio Honda next, who also stands at 2-4. They'll be hosting Cypress later today at 5 p.m. Okay, moving on to women's basketball. The women faced Cerritos Falcons last Wednesday night, hoping to gain their first win of the season. After falling behind by 10 early in the game, the Charger ladies battled back to tie the game late in the first half. I'm not sure what happened at the break though. The Charger ladies came out and allowed Cerritos to score 16 straight to start the second and ended the game 54 to 77 for their fifth straight loss. They'll be looking to reverse their streak as they face as they face off at the American River, excuse me, as they face American River at the Lady Chargers Classic beginning tomorrow. That game will take place here at Cyprus at 8 p.m. Okay, moving on to women's soccer. After beating Pierce in the first round playoffs, the Cypress ladies headed to San Diego Mesa to face the Olympians for an expected win. Spectators were given a great show as the two teams finished the regular game tied 0-0 and headed to a kickoff where Cypress was upset by the Olympians in a 4-3 loss. The Chargers were seeded lower than Mesa, but the loss marks the first time women's soccer hasn't made it past the second round playoffs since 1994. Finishing 18-3-3, Cypress ends another impressive season Although with three losses, they round out the worst season Cypress has had since 1995. Moving on to women's volleyball. We have great news coming from women's volleyball. The season is over. However, Janisha Blackwell, this year's team captain, signed her letter of intent to play for NCAA Division I Prairie View A&M University. She will play out her remaining two years of eligibility on a scholarship from A&M. I want to personally congratulate Janisha. Good luck at A&M, Janisha. Okay, well that does it for sports. Now moving on to the question of the week. Can you have morality without religion?
That's going to be the topic of next week's radio show that will be discussed on Monday between 5.30 and 6.30 by Peter Flores and Brian Curon. You can check that out by logging on to the website and listening to it live, or you can check it out after the radio show has ended by downloading it at your convenience. With that, back to you, Brian. Thanks, Kevin, for that update on the Cypress College Sports. Well, that's going to do it for this week's edition of C-Scope. I'm Brian Parinal. And I'm Vincent Lee. Thanks for watching. You stay classy, Cypress College. Pass my life.